Imagine you're a student. You've just learned the definitions of some vocabulary words in science class. Science is so cool. You're going to be a famous explorer someday, leading an expedition into a dangerous environment to discover a long extinct dinosaur. It's all so exciting. Until next month. That's when your teacher asks you to write a paper using your vocabulary words. You try to remember what the words mean, but something's wrong. You seem to have forgotten much of what you've learned. The vocabulary knowledge that inspired your dream of being an explorer seems to have faded away. What happened? Psychologist Herman Ebbinghaus was curious about the rate at which the human brain forgets new information. His research shows that although we retain 100% of the information we learn at the moment we learn it, our ability to recall that information drops quickly and then levels off over time. This phenomenon is sometimes called the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. As educators, we see Ebbinghaus's research as an opportunity. What if we could use what he learned about memory? What if we could help students strategically review previously learned information just when the brain needs it most? That's where space practice comes in. Spaced practice maximizes the brain's ability to recall information by offering practice opportunities based on the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve. Spaced practice is used by psychologists, teachers, and students all over the world. By strategically scheduling practice sessions at the points in time where students begin to forget newly learned information, we can help students remember more of their newly acquired knowledge. It works like this. Review sessions are used to spark student memory as it begins to fade, which helps to better support their rate of retention. These review sessions are scheduled at widely spaced intervals in time. This ensures that the rate of memory decay becomes more gradual and more information is retained long term. Think of it as strength training, but instead of building muscle, you're building brain power. Your students' minds are being exercised at intervals that research has shown are effective in helping them retain knowledge. Using spaced practice is just one example of ways we can leverage learning science research to support learners in the classroom. The more we carefully examine the various fields of study encompassed by the science of learning, like neuroscience and cognitive science, the more effective we can be in every precious moment spent in the classroom. As educators and learning scientists, we can help the brain work smarter, not harder, and empower all students to unlock their full potential.